How you doing? My name is Rob Carroll and this is the first video in a series of videos called Getting Starting with Test, test Stand. So, to install Test Stand, go to the National Instruments website and download the latest version of Test Stand. Um, by default, we're using Test Stand 2012, so I would recommend that you probably use that. Um, what I will do is, where this video is located, I will place a link to the installer for Test Stand 2012. So, the default adapter for Test Stand is LabVIEW, so ensure to install LabVIEW 2012 as well uh, along with the Vision uh, Toolkit and the Report Generation Toolkit but we'll walk you through that in another video so after you've got Test Stand installed to browse to it to go start all programs National Instruments and it's under Test Stand 2012 and it's called Sequence Editor again Test Stand is actually a sequence editor it's, um, its whole function is in basically calling bespoke steps to execute a given a sequence of events and record the output of those events and maybe make a pass fail on that. So when test stand starts up basically it'll give you this lovely uh, dialogue to tell you that if you're migrating from different softwares and compatibility issues click OK to that. So this login will appear. Um, again if you click cancel if you want to log in just go file login and it'll reappear. Test stand is basically designed to run as a sequence editor and also as a, a GUI for um, running automated tests. So in that case you can have multiple users. So in this case the administrator is the default user and the password is blank. But in, um, in a given scenario where we need to use this on the test floor we could add multiple users, say administrator, um, floor staff and maybe uh, maintenance staff and give them different access rights to the actual test down sequences and to the editor itself. So in this click, click OK, and you'll see that it actually opens up. So by default, um, it's laid out this way. So you have your actual sequences here. So a test and sequence can be made up of multiple small sequences. I and mean, a good analogy of this would be, um, basically, you can do multiple groups of tests before you enter a main test. Um, this is your variables. Um, inside your variables, you have locals, and you have uh, parameters and five globals. So a local is basically local to a sequence, so these are only seen by the sequence that's actually running inside this main window here. Whereas parameters uh, and file globals, or file globals uh, in particular, are actually seen by all sequences, so every um, other sequence you have up here. Station globals, similarly again, are global to the whole setup. And finally this the context is actually um, this actual sequence, and finally the run state is actually when it's actually running. And the values that are being passed for that instance of this sequence are stored in here. So you have your sequences, your variables, and finally you've got your actual, your main sequence. This is the main sequence that actually runs. So in this case it's broken into three sections. You've got your setup, min, cleanup. So your setup is basically everything that you want to do. So in our c uh, case it might be, we might want to open up Canoe, um, start CAN running, um, and check that the, the there is an RX or take signal on the bus. And then in the main, we might want to switch images, snap images, and uh, maybe analyze those images. And then the cleanup, we might want to um, switch off uh, the can and shut down canoe and reset the system. So there's an example. So setup, main, and cleanup. So then basically, you need something to put in here. So that's where you have your insertion palette. Your insertion palette basically uh, allows you to add in step test steps, so pass fail, numeric limit tests string values. These are all tests that you can conduct. We'll cover these in later tutorials. Actions, sequence calls. So these are the sequence that we discussed over here. Statements such as adding to uh, an, an incrementing number. Um, excuse me, comparing. Um, maybe you want to say pass one uh, array element into another array element. A label allows you to label your sequence. So as the, the, the <laughs> test engineer is looking at this sequence you can actually have a label uh, inside your sequence and it allows the the user to see why a certain subsequence or a certain section of code has been executed pop-up message in the case that you want user input call executable which allows you to call an executable file such as notepad or or a program that you want to call in the background anything through the through the cmd property loader property loader allows you to have a pre-defined uh, list of uh, locals and parameters and file globals that are, are loaded through this property loader into your sequence. Um, requirements link, a tool that we'll discuss again, 
um, does a similar um, similar uses a similar method to do the same FTP file. So in the case that you want to access files over file transfer protocol and additional results, in the case that you want to add something into your results that's not already um, pre-allocated by the sequence itself. Don't worry about all these, we'll, we'll go through them all in, um, in, in detail in later videos. So flow control. Flow control are, are, is important from the standpoint that it allows you to control your sequence. So everybody knows the if, if, is, if some condition occurs, then do something. Else is the second one. Um, obviously, if you do this, great. If not, do this, and that's your else. And then your if else is basically if you have this, else if this, else if this, and then else. So it basically means it's a step b before this else. Um, I'll just delete that out of there. So for loop allows you to execute for a number of given times. For each allows you to increment through an array of say images. Um, is a good example for a uh, for if for each. So in the case that we want to execute say through a array of images that you want to send to your head unit and you want to be able to snap an image of each, you would say populate an array with all the images and all the can or bap messages. Increment through each one of those uh, images, snap an image, and save it to file. Um, so while allows you to do something while a condition is um, while a condition is uh, present, and do while allows you to do a continue while a condition is not met. Um, they're very very similar. The only real difference is that one uh, evaluates the condition at the start and one evaluates the condition at the end. Break allows you to break out of say a switch statement or a uh, while loop. Continue allows you to continue in a select statement. Um, select basically is a select. So a select would be that you would have say five different branches that you want to go down and based on a input parameter it will select which branch to take. And case similarly again. Go to allows you to like the select um, jump between um, different uh, lines of your sequence and end obviously is your end end so in the case that you have an if else you know, always have an end so like this guy here you see that uh, it always has an end it, it's defaultly put in if I delete it out it'll ask me to delete the, the end as well so synchronization and timing are things that we will cover in later uh, videos I don't want to get too much into this this is um this is more for uh, advanced users. Databases again for advanced users. IVI are for controlling uh, instruments. Again, advanced users. Um, LabVIEW utilities. Again, we'll cover those in uh, later videos. And finally, this is Kinui, which we added in in a previous um, tutorial. So let's get going with the default setup. So by default configuration. Um, I always like to set up my result processing to HTML. So come in here guys and make sure that this is set to HTML and make sure that the cleanup background is set to white and whatever colors you want for your, your, your report make, make sure that you set them up in here. And you can define the way that the results are processed in here. Again you can define the way that the files are saved in here as well. I like to leave all that default. Um, a tool called requirements link to take care of the rest. So click OK to that. The second thing is you need to make sure that you put in a search directory. If you're using custom steps created by myself, I also put my custom step in the C automated system folder in the C drive. Whereas most of the Vlao PCs, if they're x86 or 32 bit, will have different uh, locations for the, the actual test and default folder as in some of them might be on the programming files national instruments test and 2012 bin other ones will be programming files national instruments test and 2012 bin um, without the x86 and it gets a little bit confusing and it gets a little bit hard to to deal with so it's easy just to put everything in the c drive it's a common location on all pcs and ensure that that guy is set up as a search directory which is this guy checked so i'm just going to remove it i'll show you to do so click on add put your c drive all of it system, create a form that's not already there, click OK and make sure that this is clicked OK. Yes. And that's pretty much it. So that is basically an introduction to test stand. There's an awful lot more here, but uh, we won't go into it uh, today. Um, the easiest thing to do will be in the next uh, in the next video I'm going to start by introducing you to these simple 
four and then from there we'll create our first